Hello, hello, I am Jessica Butts. Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast, where I help you learn to be unapologetically who you are and live your life from the front seat through personal development, self-awareness, and real and raw conversations about life, love, and business. I'm a former psychotherapist and couples counselor turned author, speaker, coach, and lovingly, well, I hope so anyway, been nicknamed Jessica Kickbutts because I believe sometimes we need hand-holding and sometimes we just need to be told the freaking truth, even if it hurts a little. So each week I'll be sharing truth bombs, life lessons, powerful interviews, and intuitive insights to empower you to get up, show up, and live your life in a new, powerful, authentic way. So if you're ready to climb into your front seat and embark on a journey of total transformation, you have come to the right place. Start your engines. Let's do this. All right, Front Seat Lifers, you are in for a treat. This is technically the second episode of the new year, but it is 2020, and I kind of couldn't think of a better person uh, to start the new year with than Susan Hyatt. So she is currently my coach. Uh, When I was looking to up-level my game and take my business to the next level, I started asking a bunch of people for some coaches and she was mentioned numerous times. I started stalking her on social media. We had a conversation and I just couldn't think of a better person. If there's anybody sassier than me, it's probably Susan Hyatt. And that's saying a lot because I'm pretty damn sassy myself. (laughs) Susan is, uh, she just keeps it real. She's a hustler. She works hard. Uh, She has a beautiful message uh, for her business clients as also as her bear clients. She is a true, true inspiration, a real, uh, a real boss babe. If I, if I can say that without it being weird, she is absolutely uh, the real deal. And I was honored to be on her podcast earlier in 2019. And I'm honored and delighted to have her with you today. Uh, she asks a question in the episode that I, I encourage you to consider. And this is something that I do in my life and all of my clients, all of my mastermind clients, all of my girl boss clients, all of my lady boss clients, they are required to do the same, which is set 90 day goals. So she asks a question in the episode that I encourage you to think about throughout the episode. And then what I would love for you to do is, are you in my squad yet? So I've got this free Facebook group, the Front Seat Squad, where I basically uh, inspire, motivate, educate, connection, like-minded people, all the awesome stuff. We've got squad goals. We've got topics that we're talking about. But most importantly, uh, it is a happy hour with me. So once a month, uh, we get together. We do a Facebook Live and I answer all of your questions. So as this podcast grows, as things grow and get bigger, um, I obviously cannot answer everybody's questions, but I want to. I want to. I mean, I do this work because I freaking love it and I want to be connected to all of you. So the way that I do that is in the Front Seat Squad. Again, it's a free Facebook group. I've asked you a couple of questions in there, your personality type. We're trying to keep out all the, you know, the not great people and trying to let in the awesome people. So we ask you a couple of questions, but come join the squad. It's Front Seat Squad. So uh, the easiest way to get in there is jessicabutts.com backslash squad, S-Q-U-A-D, jessicabutts.com backslash squad. And what we're going to do in there is all kinds of awesome things, but once a month we're doing happy hour. So I'm probably going to pour some wine, maybe tea, but probably wine. Uh, And for 90 minutes once a month, I'm going to answer your questions about these kinds of episodes, all kinds of other Front Seat Life related things. Uh, But this is an opportunity to ask me some questions and connect. One of my core values for my life and my business is connection. I believe deeply, deeply, deeply in connecting. However, 
one of the things that happens as your message starts to resonate with people is you get bigger. And I, I love it, but it, there, it's also, uh, there's pros and cons. So it, it's great because the message gets out there, but it also limits the amount of people that I can kind of get back to. I think you get what I'm saying. And I strive to find ways that I can connect with people. So the squad has been built. It was a community before. We've turned it into Front Seat Squad where I'm obviously sharing uh, the, the content from here. We're doing squad goals. We're doing videos. There's tons and tons and tons, literally years of content. So this group has been around. So if you ever want to go back and like stalk the shit out of me, this would be a great place to do it. All the videos from the past three years are in there. They're all organized. It's a really, really beautiful group. So anyway, go get go get your booties in there. It's uh, jessicabutts.com backslash squad. It's free. And I will be answering questions. Again, we're going to be doing happy hour with me once a month. So in that... One of the questions I would love uh, for you to be thinking of in January and for this episode, which Susan poses in the in the uh, episode, is what big action are you going to do in 90 days? I do 90-day goals with my clients, and we do three. And it's a way to keep you focused and not squirrel off. So anybody can do this, whether you have a business or you don't have a business, so many things come into our life, right? Like, oh, I got distracted here. Oh, I got distracted here. Oh, bright, shiny object. Oh, squirrel. Ah, I'm all over the place. This is a way for us to stay focused. And so I love that Susan brought this up because I have been huge on the 90 days. And so what big thing set a date for a big action and just get it done. If I'm being really transparent, this is actually what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's uh, it's 3.53 and I'm not an evening person or an afternoon person, I am a morning person. And I typically don't work uh, in the afternoons, evenings, but I've got a whole bunch of shit that I need to get done and I haven't gotten it done. And so this is, I'm actually tackling this exact concept right now today. I'm going to work until probably six or seven tonight because I need to get some stuff done that I keep procrastinating on. I have shoved myself in my office. Uh, I have locked my door and I am not to go out <laughs> into the world without getting this stuff done. And this sense of relief that comes from setting a day, picking a day and just getting it done is such an unbelievable sense of accomplishment. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode with the brilliant and magnificent Susan Hyatt. I also hope that you will join us in the Front Seat Squad. I am having a shit ton of fun in there already. I shared squad goals uh, on Monday as we kicked off the new year together. And uh, I'm just inspired as all get out to be having some fun in there. So I hope you will join us and I will see you in there for some Q&A uh, later this month with some wine and whatever you want to drink, uh, tea, water, wine, fireball, whatever suits your fancy. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Enjoy. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a very special guest today. She is actually my coach at the moment. She is one serious dynamo. I, I joke with all of my clients that if there's anybody sassier than me in the world, <laughs> I think it's probably Susan Hyatt. So welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, Susan. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> Sass on tap. <laughs> all about the sass. This could be a very interesting episode. So uh, Susan recently had me on her podcast and I got a ton of amazing feedback just about the content, but also about the two of us being sassy and crazy and full of energy. <laughs> uh, and so of course, I wanted to have her on mine as well about a, somewhat of a different topic because mine is really about living your life from the front seat, being unapologetically who you are, doing things different 
from other people in the world. Like that is, that is completely, you know, my jam, my mm-hmm. listeners know my story about leaving corporate America, leaving my spouse of 20 years, starting all over, doing the whole thing and starting this company and going from nothing to, to where I am today. And you actually have a similar story. And so I want to, I want to know from you, because this is going to be a beginning of 2020 episode. Yes. I mean, we are starting a damn new decade with this episode. Um, and so I want to talk a bit about your kind of Shiro story, if you will. Um, And then I want to talk about some of your favorite, favorite techniques to cut out the bullshit Mm -hmm. and to kick some serious ass and what that takes for you. Because I think Mm -hmm. every coach has a a different take on it. Mm -hmm. And I find it, it's one of the most inspiring things that I can hear from people is Mm -hmm. your own story Mm because I do not believe in people and do not work with people who are not vulnerable, do not share their own stories and pontificate and talk at people. There's (laughs) nothing I find more irritating than people who talk (laughs) at people. Um, And you are certainly not one of those people. So why don't you jump in? Because I I would love to hear your story of kind of where you were, what you're doing now, writing bear, you know, mm-hmm. all of the things that you're doing, you just started an agency, you've got a new planner, you're a coach, you're a <laughs> coach, all the things. <laughs> um, and then some of your favorite um, kick-ass stuff that came from, because it, it, right, it always comes from your story. It always totally comes from, from your, your journey. So when did your journey start, Miss Susan? Oh my gosh. Woo! Well, I have so many, what I like to call hell and back stories. I'm a rape survivor. I am a wife of 26 years and I have two kids who are 21 and 19. And probably one of my biggest triumphs is going from a woman who experienced trauma, wanted to cover up and hide and not deal with it to becoming a woman who shows up online um, half naked in bikinis and (laughs) has reclaimed her vulnerability and sexuality and her body, Mm -hmm. which is a big part of my message. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was 21 years old, uh, was attacked by a stranger behind a shopping center. Mm -hmm. And when I look back on that now, at the time, I just wanted to pretend it didn't happen. I went home and didn't tell anyone. Mm. I was married at the time already, newlywed. Um, Went home, pretended it didn't happen until I became pregnant and had no idea who the father was. And so, holy shit, Susan. Yeah. So then I had to have a really difficult conversation with my husband to say, okay. I'm pregnant, but don't get excited because this happened to me six weeks ago and I didn't even tell you. Oh my, oh my goodness. Wow. Right? Like I honestly remember thinking the thought, no one has to know this happened to you. Don't tell anyone. Like I was, I was absolutely telling myself that the best possible plan so that I would not be viewed as a quote unquote victim was to just pretend it didn't happen. I didn't have any understanding of what trauma does to you, that this was a terrible plan. (laughs) And so thank goodness I was married to Scott Anthony Hyatt, Mm. who was like, you're going to therapy. Like you, like what? And and then was faced with the difficult conversation or difficult discussion of, do we keep this baby? Wow. And we hadn't really made the decision and I lost, I miscarried. Oh, wow. So then I blamed myself for the miscarriage. Look what you did. You know, you didn't want this child. And, mm. and um, so that was like trauma after trauma with that, re-traumatizing myself. And it took years of therapy for me to really come to a place where this was something that happened to me, but this was not who I was. This was not me. Um, And I took that knowledge with me into creating this company. So I started this company a decade later 
and I was working in residential real estate and making a great living selling homes, enjoyed my customers, but just knew that was not what I was meant to be doing in the world Mm. and was, you know, had these two little kids and really went on a road to discovery to figure out like, who was I, what did I want to be doing with my life and thinking like maybe some of the listeners here, I've checked all the boxes, you know, I went to school and I got the degree and I married the guy and I had the two kids and why am I not fulfilled? Yes. I have my hands flying in the air right now because this Mm -hmm. is so the story of so many of my followers Mm -hmm. and my listeners. This is the story. How Mm -hmm. old were you, Susan? When I had this existential crisis, I was probably 30. Oh, you were early. Mine was about 35. Okay. Keep going. 30 or yeah, 30. And I was the the poster child for, you know, just because you're great at something doesn't yes. mean you have any business doing it. Yeah, yeah. And zone of competence, by the way, that's what that, that zone keeps you in. Oh, I'm yep. competent at it. it. It is like the devil. It will keep you stuck for the rest of your fucking life. If you like, oh, I'm fine. I'm making good money. Fine. Like that's my least favorite word. Oh, I'm fine. It's me too. Yeah. Me too. In fact, uh, Scott Hyatt is not allowed to use that word. (laughs) Like if I say, how does this look? The answer is not fine. Correct. Um, Like I can't stand it. I'm allergic to it. So, but that's what, like everything, the window dressing was really beautiful, but we opened the curtain and I was drowning. So I went on this road of discovery to figure out, you know, what else I might do, you know, went back to therapy, hired a life coach myself, and lo and behold, realized that, you know, I was, I was a born motivator, coach, speaker, author, and I was also someone who had stopped writing Mm. when I was, I, I entered college to become a journalist and had an English 101 teacher review something that I had written for the school newspaper and say to me, oh, sweetheart, I just don't want you to embarrass yourself. Yeah. And, and I, at 18, didn't have the mindset tools that thankfully my kiddos have that they learned that like, this is one person in authority who has an opinion, but I took that opinion on as fact and stopped writing. Well, when I became a coach, and all of a sudden I had a blog and I could say whatever I wanted. Yes, so uh, good. <laughs> I started writing again and I, yeah. I really came all the way full circle. But <clears throat> so I went from like trauma survivor, burnt out workaholic, real estate agent, parent to somebody who created her own company and leveraged natural talent and gifts to help other women do the same thing. So good. So tell us how you got into the whole uh, bear sequence, the whole bear stuff, the body shaming. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm going to guess that the the rape had a lot to do with hiding and covering mm-hmm. yourself up and that whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, so you wear a few different hats and one of them is working out and having a, just that whole thing with your mm-hmm. body. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and you wrote a book about it. So tell us how that all came to pass. So, yeah. So in order to, one of the things that I did that many women do to cope with trauma was eat. And also decided that if I just covered myself up enough and didn't attract a lot of attention, that that would somehow keep me safe, which as we know is not true. What you're wearing and how you look has nothing to do with whether or not you are a victim of sexual assault but I developed some bad habits over the years. And when I learned thought work and started really looking at how I was coping with feeling uncomfortable and how I viewed myself, what emerged through my work over time, working with women was helping women reclaim their power and own the skin they're in and feel comfortable in the skin that they're in And through my own weight loss journey and my own coming to terms with being a feminine, sexual woman, the bare process was what shook out of that in my work with 
hundreds now thousands of women. For those of us that don't know, tell us a little bit about the bear process. I mean, mm-hmm. you're 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 replicating it. It's it's like this huge movement. So uh, talk to us about that. Well, it's really a process in a woman coming home to herself. What I noticed when women would hire me for quote unquote weight loss back in the day. So I could help a woman lose weight, but the real work was very different. The real work underneath that Mm -hmm. was about learning how to access her thoughts and feelings. And so the bear, I started to notice the homework assignments that I would assign that had the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak, that would help me get access to what was really going on. And so I created this process and it's everything from getting your mindset mindset right, moving with love, eating with attention instead of mm. deprivation. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you adorn yourself? You know, what, what, mm-hmm. what are you putting against your skin that matters? And so, yes, we talk about exercise. Yes, we talk about eating, but it's, does this feel like love? So it's an approach that is pleasure-based instead of deprivation-based. Mm. Awesome. What's been the, what's been people's response to that? I mean, been I've been a- watching, so I know, but what's been the <laughs> response to that? It's been an overwhelmingly enthusiastic response because I think women are tired of it. Yeah. They're tired of the whole body shaming yeah. that goes on. They're tired of dieting and counting points and everything. And now we're moving into, I'm writing the next book, which I've renamed Bear for Girls. I'm calling oh, it Bold. Yes. Love. So Bold. And we're moving into schools now. We have our first school district that's incorporating bold, the bold curriculum um, for their junior high girls. And, you know, it's, I'm out here right now in LA filming a documentary for the book. So it's, it's going really well. I'm really proud of this work. Good. Uh, It feels so good. So it took you how long? So that book is new. So tell, Mm -hmm. this is always interesting to me because I, you work with entrepreneurs, so do I. And Mm -hmm. I find it fascinating how many people have the myth Mm -hmm. that all of this shit happens overnight. (laughs) I just choked on my hot tea. Right. Yeah. I have people say, oh, you know, I wrote two books this year. And I'm like, oh, my, my gut reaction is those must be a piece of shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But there's no way you can write a good book. It, it, two books in a year. It, but you're, the, the look on Susan's face right now is hysterical. She's just disgusted. It, it, I, it, I, it, I, it makes me bananas. I, I agree. Thing because it's like, well, sure. Um, You can go to these workshops where they're like, you're going to write a book in a weekend. It's going to be a shitty book, y'all. You can't, (laughs) you cannot produce great work like that. And so, so yeah, I mean, I, Mm -hmm. I worked on the book for a couple of years. Then once I got an agent for the book, it took nine months to get a book deal. And then once I got the book deal, it took 13 months to make it on the shelves. Those four years, right? Four Four years in the making. Four years, listeners, four years, anything that we're doing. So I have a, I I think I have a mixed audience as you probably do too. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of couples who listen. I have a lot of just women who listen and then obviously entrepreneurs. And I think whatever it is that you're working on in your life, you got to have the long plan. You got to have the long-term vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am so over people living five minutes in front of their face, trying something for a week or, oh, I tried it and it didn't work. And it's like, what is the long-term vision? What's the long-term plan? Because to me, that is what keeps this insanity of this business that I'm running, this life that I lead, same with you. It's totally what keeps me going. And I'm curious your your take on that too. Like what keeps you going and what advice do you have to people who are just like, well, I tried, it didn't work. <laughs> Whenever somebody, I, I'm giggling because, right, like whenever somebody says, I, I tried everything or I tried, I'm like, okay, what'd you try? Yeah. And it's like two things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, for and a so, week. Yeah, for a <laughs> week. And it, and it definitely is the long game because you, you have to be super connected to like, why are you in this? So, which is why people who are only in it to become famous on Instagram 
or they're only in it to make a quick buck aren't going to survive because your, your why has to be more compelling than that to you. So my why with bear is a very long game. I mean, like I haven't even scratched the surface, Mm, you know, the, it's a long game, long game where when I, at the end of this career, look back at my legacy, I want to be able to say like the bear or bold curriculum is known internationally for schools, hospitals, healthcare systems, you know, that, that it is no longer just like now when we look at smokers and, and we think like, why are you doing that? Like my kid's generation, like smoking is so like, what, right? I want people to think of dieting that way. I want the impact to be that if somebody says they're on a diet, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. Right. That it's, it's because it's as dangerous to your health as smoking is. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, like that's not going to happen next week. That's going to yeah. take some work. And are there things that you can do to have an impact today? Yes. And we're going to string those days together yes. in years and decades and a body of work. Yeah. That you can be proud of your legacy. Yeah. I have my favorite tools for kind of the long vision. What are your favorite tools for your clients um, for, to, to hold on to that, that long-term vision? So I like to think of whatever kind of work you're doing. So for me, I can think of myself previously or that woman who I remember vividly, and this is my why, I remember vividly sitting in my tiny closet of a real estate office on an orange footstool in the corner crying, Mm -hmm. like at my wits end and thinking like, if I figure this shit out, I'm going to help other people figure it out. But I I think of that woman who was sitting on that stool or you could think of whoever it is that you want to help or the impact that you want to have. And I'm always like, if you don't get over yourself today, Susan Hyatt, there are millions of women crying on the floor of their bathroom, their office, whatever it might be. That's my why. Or my other why is the story I tell of when my daughter, who's now 19, when she was 10 years old, she came home from school I'll never forget it. And I was unpacking her lunchbox and she said, Hey mom, fourth grade, all the girls at the cafeteria table today made a pact to go on a diet and not eat their lunch. Oh, oh and wow. she said, that's messed up. Right. Cause she like heard this stuff out of me for already, you know, long enough. And I just stopped and I'm like looking like she ate her lunch. Cause I'm looking at the wrappers, but I'm like, she was like, I'm the only one that ate my lunch. Wow. And I thought, okay, I'm not leaving those little girls at the cafeteria table starving. Like, that's my why. Like, if I, if I don't <clears throat> stay connected to that why, I can get just like anybody else caught up in all the excuses. When you go back to connecting to like, hey, we have a responsibility here to reach our hands out and bring other girls and women along with us. And it's not okay to say, I'm just going to go to the beach today and ignore my mission. No, get to work. Yeah. I think that's really a powerful statement about having that mission Mm -hmm. and connecting it back to that moment. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very in my head right now in that moment of my moment and anybody who now does work around your mess is your message Mm -hmm. that everyone knows that moment. Yeah. And I had two, and it sounds like you've had a couple. Mine was uh, when I was 30 on my kitchen floor, not my bathroom Mm -hmm. floor, bawling my -hmm. brains out, Mm -hmm. having my husband at the time, my husband at the time now husband (laughs) out having an affair. Mm Mm-hmm. And sitting on that floor, disgusted with my life, Mm -hmm. disgusted with myself, Mm -hmm. pissed off that I'm allowing this. Like I fucking knew what was going on Mm -hmm. and I had become so, who was I? Who is this person? I mean, people now today say, how could you have done that? I'm like, cause I'm not who I, I mean, I've evolved. I've evolved. Right. Right. 
I didn't have the tools. Right. Uh, and my heart was broken. All of the things. But that woman, and I know that woman is everywhere around the world today, mm-hmm. have lost herself, doesn't know who she is, doesn't know how to stand up for herself, doesn't know how to have effective communications with people in her life. Because I am all about relationships. I love that you've been married for 26 years. Mm-hmm. I am all about that. But I'm also about having a relationship that serves you so that you can flourish and you are two individual whole human beings that go out into the world and have your own life, have your own fulfillment, have your own things. And you come back to whole non-codependent human beings. (laughs) Right. And so that is one of my whys. And then Mm. that's my life stuff, my life Mm -hmm. coaching, totally why I became a psychotherapist, like all Mm -hmm. the stuff. And -hmm. then the second moment was when I was uh, about to divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely knew that I was going to walk away with nothing. Had a therapy office, had just started my practice. I was Mm -hmm. doing all the things that all the coaches told me to do. Mm -hmm. I had a moment. I literally got on my knees. Mm. I had a huge window. I got on my knees and had one of the ugliest, most like somatic responses, cries, like my whole body was shaking, praying to God. Actually, I think I might've been yelling at God Mm. that I am doing everything. I need your help. I can't do this. Like those moments of, I want this new dream. I was, I was postgraduate school. Like, you know, I had spent $50,000 on this education. Like I needed this new life to work. Mm -hmm. And, um, those are the moments I agree that, that keep us connected to our why, because we want to help those people. So if there's anybody listening now that's in those moments of your, you're struggling to stay connected. It's always those moments that I think get us up every day and do these crazy things that we do. Totally. You've got to stay connected to your why. And if your why isn't compelling enough, your business is not going to be sustainable. Do you believe that? I do believe that. Yeah. Because you know, everybody's motivated by different things, Yep. but the going gets tough at different levels of your business for different reasons. And if you aren't anchored in a strong enough why, then it becomes so easy to say, I'm out. Like, I'm just going to go get a job, or I'm just going to like, go do something different because this isn't worth it to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would uh, add passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, Passion is part of the why, but yeah, if you are not, I don't even remember where I read this. This was years and years and years ago. I remember filling out some silly form that said, if you could talk about five things, maybe it was only three things, three to five things for the rest of your life at a at, at, at dinner party, like every party you go to for the rest of life, <laughs> you're only allowed to talk about three things. What would they be? And I, re- I mean, I, re- I was like 25 years old and I remember writing down personality type. <laughs> That's so awesome. And my husband at the time totally laughed it off and was like, really? You know, whatever. It was just so much judgment. <laughs> and I still think about that because I was like, that is just a passion. That is just a nerdy, like, I love this shit so much that even back then, Uh, This is something that, yeah, I still want to do. I still want to talk about as you do with your passion uh, um, around, what what would you call it? It's not fitness. It's not weight loss. It's body empowerment. I would say body empowerment, um, body positivity, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of all over the place right now, but every woman needs that. I'm going to share something. I wasn't sure if I was going to share this, but I am. I was just recently in Maui. Mm -hmm. And so when I got divorced, I also did the, uh, uh, food is my drug of choice Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so when I got divorced, I gained, you know, not a lot to some people, but for me, it was the 12 pound mark is that like, it's just the fluff that's on Mm -hmm. like the body that I'm supposed to have kind of a Mm -hmm. feeling. And, um, I struggle with kind of going back and forth. Anyway, I was in Maui and I was totally body shaming myself. Mm, yeah. I just was. And I was by myself. <laughs> it's even more weird. Like I'm by myself and I, I was bad. I, I mean, I have, a, I'm not nice to my, my demon or my little mm-hmm. girl or my ego. So some mm-hmm. people are nice to it. I am not. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, shut the fuck up. 
You have more and better things to do in the world right now than worry about this extra five pounds that you're carrying right now. Like you are beautiful. You are magnificent. You are more than this stupid stomach or some cellulite on your ass. Like this is the dumbest. I, I mean, I was just disgusted that any amount of my energy was taken to thinking about the cellulite on my ass. Like at one second a day, I should not be concerned about that. That one second could have been used for good. And it yeah. just, it made me just, it made me crazy, crazy. Well, I, I, I agree. And I, and, and that's like the whole premise of bear is, is helping women like, well, I would say, of course you were body shaming yourself because that's what culture at large has taught us as women to do. And we yeah. have to, and you did a brilliant job of clapping back at it. And I, and the whole premise of bear is like, Hey, let's focus on expanding our lives yes. instead of being obsessed with shrinking our waistlines. Because if we could bottle up all the time and energy, like by the time a woman's my age, which is 46, she's dieted on average 30 years of her life. <sighs> Right. And so you think about that over a lifespan and think about if we as women can take our time and energy and focus and put it on things that really, truly matter. So true. All the glass ceiling smashed, you know, it's so, so, so true. That is always my thing is I I always joke like I'm never going to be a supermodel. I am not Giselle Bundchen, but I want to be my best. I always talk about it as my vessel. Like I just want Mm -hmm. my vessel to be the best that it can because then it's healthy, it's good, it's, it's functioning so that I can go out and do the best things that I need to do in the world, which is not to be a supermodel, but (laughs) right. Um, okay. So let's switch gears here a little bit, because I want you to share with my amazing, loyal, fabulous audience. Thank you, everybody. I, I just get the nicest DMs, the best reviews. I just, I love it. So I want to know, I'm totally putting you on the spot. I never tell my guests, by the way, beforehand, what we're going to talk about. So I love it. And so we're going into 2020. Mm -hmm. No, we're in it. Well, we're currently when we're recording, (laughs) we're going into it, but you're listening to it right now and welcome to a new decade. So I would love if you could share one, two, three, four, however many you want your top tips or top tools, top whatever you use as a human being, Susan Hyatt, to really have the best year possible. Yes. So we're stepping into 2020 like bosses, which makes me so excited. Whole new decade. So good. Um, The number one tip, most of your audience is going to want to turn this off, but I am (laughs) telling you. The number one tip is you have to move your body. We were just talking about sweat, sweat with love and not punishment. So the mind body connection is so essential and our bodies are made to move. Mm -hmm. And so me personally, I was someone who refused to exercise, refused. You can't make me. I had this mindset that it's shallow. I have better things to do with my time, blah, 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 blah. That all comes from having a real transactional relationship with the body. Like I'll only move you if you look like Giselle Bündchen, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll only move you if you give me JLo's ass by Friday. Yeah. If we take and strip all that away and we're moving for the sake of getting energy, releasing emotion that's in the body, powering us up, you are going to have a much more profitable and productive year, I promise, if you get into the habit of moving it in some way that feels like love for you. It could be boot camp. It could be Tai Chi. I don't know, but find that way and move consistently. Love it. Is my number one tip. Love it. My other biggest tip is to develop good mental hygiene. Mm. So if... If you are not yet someone, I'm guessing if they listen to your podcast, they already know what thought work is, but you must develop a practice of, of eavesdropping on yourself, mm-hmm. noticing when that mean girl, like in Hawaii, was talking to you about cellulite or five pounds or whatever, noticing that tracking the repeat offenders. Like what are the common thoughts that you have over and over and over again that do not serve you 
and learning how to change those thoughts. When I learned thought work 13 years ago, I felt like I had won the lottery. I couldn't believe it. First of all, I couldn't believe like, what are you telling me that everything I think isn't true? (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then learning how to create thought that can generate good feeling states and productivity and change and the results that you actually want, right? Yeah. So movement, mindset. And I would also say, so let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Tell me about, is your audience made up of primarily entrepreneurs? No, no, no? probably 50-50. So probably 50% entrepreneurs or this pre-entrepreneur. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of kind of this pre-entrepreneur women that are sitting there waiting for the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just like you were. I'm uninspired. There's something nagging at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, my life is fine. I should mm-hmm. be happy, uh, but I am I am jumping out of my skin to go do something different or better. So mm-hmm. probably 90% of my listeners are intuitive types, which we have mm-hmm. talked about. So Susan's mm-hmm. an ENFJ. I'm an ENFJ. They are 90% intuitive. So they're mm-hmm. all the weirdos, I call us. We yes. are the creatives that think outside the box, the different find does not work for us. We do not want the white picket fence. We do not love the mm-hmm the, you know, the, the, the thing, the life that 75% of the people think is fine. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot. So Can't do it. Listeners. Yes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I would say then for the 50% entrepreneurs, if you better be able to answer this question, what are your consistent business hours? And during those business hours, are you consistently asking people for money? Ah! <laughs> right? You're not in business if you're not solid on those two things. You're you have a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would say. And for those of you who are budding entrepreneurs, I would think about setting a date. Yeah. This quarter. Yeah. By the end of Q1 of 2020, what do you want to be able to say? Do you want to sit, be it, say I'm still thinking about it or yeah. I'm doing something about it? Yeah. I always did. uh, When I was a therapist, I did a ton of couples therapy and my thing was 90 days. I am a huge believer Mm -hmm. in going all in Mm -hmm. one way or the other for 90 days. Meaning Mm -hmm. if you think you want to leave your spouse, fine. That's not for me to decide. But what I'm interested in is what if you gave it your all for 90 days and then you get to make a decision at the end. But we spend so much time waffling Mm -hmm. and questioning and going back and forth and one foot in and Mm -hmm. one foot out. And you, I I mean, Susan, I'm sure you agree with this. There is no way in hell, either one of us would be where we are today if we were one foot in and one foot out. Like there's no plan B. No, there's no plan B. No. And I, I love that you use the words all in because I've taught webinars on how to be all in. Like, yeah. and the whole marriage example you just gave, you've got to love it before you leave it. And I was, when I was um, having my existential crisis, um, <laughs> I was, Scott Hyatt was to blame for everything. Mm-hmm. He was my escape like you scapegoat, are the scapegoat yeah, totally. and, um, and I went to my therapist and I'm like, I'm leaving. And she basically said what you said, like, well, what if you actually showed up for your marriage? And I did. And guess what? It was my shit, not Scott's shit. I'm like, damn it. Why can't he be to blame? Right. But Hey, listen, yeah, if you're going to do this, you 90 days, be all in quit yeah. with this man, be Pam, be, yeah. I love these. I love these set a date to do the thing Mm -hmm. set a date. Cause I I mean, I tell the story at nauseum with my clients about my second book. Don't do stuff you suck at. I had the same book coach and we're dear, dear friends. um, But this was the definitely the biggest fight that we ever got in. So it was, we were up down to the wire. I mean, I picked a deadline. It was my birthday. I said, I'm going to, no, no, it was my event. It was my event. I launched my first book on my birthday. The second book was on my second event. So like it's a deadline. It's happening. And we were at, we were at our wits end. We were at the end. And she said on the phone, you know, if we need to push this back. And I said, don't ever say that 
to me again. <laughs> and let me give you some coaching tips. Don't ever say that to one of your clients ever fucking again, because we do not need an out. We need a deadline. And there needs I, that's to- a quotable. Y'all tweet that. <laughs> we do not need an out. We need a deadline. Hell to the yes. You've got to hold your feet accountable. You've got to have a thing. If it's never, there's just, there just has to be a deadline. So I just said, we're done now. I love you. And I'm going to kill you if you ever say that to me again. (laughs) So, and the book was done and it was a, you know, it's beautiful and it was a mess, but it's done and it's beautiful and all the things. So I love love this. And then uh, as we wrap up here, I think one of the other things that you have taught me since we've been working together is this ask, ask for everything, ask for everything. I, I will admit one of, one of my mindset issues has been definitely playing small and people Mm -hmm. don't want to talk to me and they don't want to play with me. And uh, how could that be true? What a lie. It's all the stories. It's all the stories. Nobody wants me on their podcast. I'm just going to create this own little tiny little world bubble here and do my own little thing. And I think one of our first meetings, I was like, I don't know how to get out of this. And she's like, have you asked? (laughs) And I was like, oh, I'm going to love her and hate her at the same time. (gasps) And so that's one of the things is ask, ask for money, ask to be on the stage, ask to be on the podcast, do it in a professional way. Let me add, don't send those annoying ass messages of like, oh, this is why I think I'd be great on your podcast. Not the way to do it. We'll teach you the ways, but do it in the right way. But freaking ask, 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 ask. You did a great webinar about ask for everything, Mm -hmm. all the things. So it's, it's one of my mottos. Okay. My gorgeous. So as we are closing up here, talk to us about, uh, you have a planner and then I want to know how people can find out about you. Yes, I have. Although the planner is now sold out. Wow, congratulations. (laughs) Congratulations. Thank you. I have a planner called the Go Time Planner, and I happen to think it's the best planner on the market. But um, if you want to get on the wait list for 2021's planner, let us know. Awesome. Good for you. On Instagram at Susan Hyatt. Same for Facebook. I give webinars and I have my own podcast where you can listen to the episode with the lovely Jessica Butts on there that, by the way, I got tons of great feedback about it oh, as great. well because you. you're Thank a star. You. Thank you. Um, so the podcast is called Rich Coach Club and it's all about how to make money in your business. Awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. I know tomorrow you are starting your documentary uh, filming, so we will all be looking out for that and watching you and just thank you so much for the work that you do in this world. Uh, It's very, very needed. I love that you're going into the girls' work. Like That's going to just literally change decades and ripple effect is going to be huge. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. the bottom of my heart. Truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or strategy days or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.